Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray you fulfill your word in every life in Jesus' name. All the sorrows of the past, gone. All the sickness of the past, gone. All the infirmities, weaknesses of the past, gone. And all the curses and all the yokes of the past, gone in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that whatever the devil tied on anyone, anyone's leg, anyone's hand, anyone's neck, and put on anybody's back, we dislodge that right now. We remove that right now. You set your people free in Jesus' name. And as I'm moving on, oh Lord, we pray, we will go upward, we will go forward, will be onward ever in Jesus' name. The past is gone. A new inheritance, a new horizon, a new covenant, a new blessing you pour upon everyone in Jesus' name. The faith to achieve, the faith to succeed, the faith to make progress, and the faith to inherit all your promises grant to every one of us in Jesus name we know it is done we know it is done confirm it in every life Lord in Jesus name we pray in Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter 4 I'm reading to you here from verse 16 this passage tells a story of somebody that crossed over. He had married, was barren, and the Lord called him out. His name is Abraham. Actually, God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. And the Lord said he was going to bless him beyond his wildest imagination. The Lord was going to make him a blessing, not only to his locality, not only to his community, not only to his country, but to all the families of the earth. And the blessings of the Lord is coming upon your head in Jesus' name. Beyond anything you can ask, beyond anything you can dream of, the Lord is going to make you cross over onto the land of blessing in Jesus' name. Look at this in Romans chapter 4. And when reading from verse 16, it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Those two words there, it is of faith. Already I've told you a number of times, faith is forgetting all. I trust him. It's calling you to a place of trust, a place of belief. A place of trusting and leaning and resting upon the Lord. Forget the past. Forget him all. I trust him. And then there's grace there. God's riches at Christ's expense because of Calvary. Because of the cross and because of the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. is purchased redemption and riches and righteousness for everyone that's why it says it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that is for the purpose that the promise might be sure the promise of God is sure I say the promise of God is sure to everyone that comes salvation available the promise is sure and to everyone that consecrates that lays everything upon the altar and he says lord here is who i am here is what i am here is all i have and he lays everything on the altar the promise of sanctification holiness available the promise is sure and the promise is sure for the people that want to serve the lord in the power of the holy ghost and he says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The promise is sure for those who are sick and they want to be healed. The promise is sure. It says you'll serve the Lord. He'll bless your bread and bless your water. And then he says he'll take sicknesses away from the midst of you. The promise is sure. Any yoke, any curse upon anybody's life. The Lord says there is an anointing that breaks the yoke. The yoke is broken by the anointing in Jesus' name. 
it is saying that the promises of God they are wide as wide as the ocean they are deep as deep as the ocean they are high as high as the heavens and because they are deep and broad and wide and high it says that promise is sure meeting every need spiritual need professional need personal need family need the promise is sure and then it goes on it says to all the seed not to that only which is of the law it says not to the natural Israel only not to the Jews only but the promise is sure to everyone as you are there this day that promise will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name this, then it says but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all is bringing both the Gentiles and the Jews together is bringing both the white and the blacks together and it says for all of us then it says as it is written you want to make sure that your prayer as you come here is as it is written everything you are asking for must be as it is reaching and all your aspirations all your ambitions everything you are saying oh lord this is what i want go back to the world as it is reaching you see that is the reason why all those people in the old testament and the new testament in bible days that is how they got their blessing they made sure that their prayer their aspiration their ambition their desires everything was as it is reaching be a man of the book a woman of the book a christian of the book that is take this book of the word of god and see what is written your attitude moderated by the what is written your heart your life your thoughts your action your habits your behavior and your comportment everything lining up with what is written as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickness the dead any part of your life dead he'll quicken it today in jesus name we're serving a god a god who is lie a god who quickens the dead a god who is able to turn everything in your life turn everything around and then it says he quickens the dead and he calleth those things which be not as though they were we gazed hope as 18 believed in hope that ye might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and be not weak in faith you are strong in faith say i am strong in faith it says be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God. Some of the promises of God are so great. They're so high. When he says, I'll put a new heart in you, it's almost unbelievable. I'll take the stony heart out of your flesh. It's almost unbelievable. I'll make a saint out of you. It's almost unbelievable. You'll walk before me in perfection. It's almost unbelievable. Even though the promise were great and high, yet we're told that Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. All the promises has given us that he wants to make this of us and that of us is going to fulfill because it's a mighty God. He cannot fail. He will not fail your life in Jesus' name. Because being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God's strong belief. But... He was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. In verse 21, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Able also to perform. Able also to perform. Something is happening in your life today. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Faith for earthly inheritance. 
There are three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, uncompromising faith for the inheritance. I need to clear something for you. That word sage, who is a sage? Because sometimes religion confuses people. You have St. Augustine, you have St. Paul, you have St. Peter. And the idea from those denominations is after you are dead, then they are the one that canonize you as a saint. But according to the word of God, Old Testament and New Testament, while you are still alive, when the blood of Jesus does a cleansing work in you, when the Lord himself turns you around, when he sprinkles that clean water upon you and you are clean and it changes your life, changes your language, changes your habit, changes your character and it makes you a new creature in Christ. It makes you a saint. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 3. We're talking about the inheritance of the saints. You know, if you have a letter, you need to look at the name at the back of that letter before you open it, before you read it. Because if you read another person's letter, whatever you read in there is not for you. This is just for the saints, the inheritance of the saints. Who are the saints? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Neither fornication, nor foolish talking, nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. That's verse 4, by the way. Now I come to verse 3. But fornication and all of cleanness or covetousness, let it not be, tell me, once named among you as what? Become a saint. These are the saints. So in point one, as I come to this point one, the inheritance of the saints. And I come to chapter four. Look at chapter four. Describing the saints before you claim the inheritance. Before you take hold and say, this is mine. And I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to experience it. Look at the saints, the inheritance of the saints. I'm looking at chapter 4 and verse 22. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. Put that off. To be a saint, you know, it's not just everyone that's born of a woman that's a saint. Not everybody that goes to church that's a saint. Not everybody that says some deep and light that's a saint. The people that put off the works of the flesh, the things belonging to the devil, the defilement, the iniquity, the sin, the transgression, the people that put that off, those are the saints. Look at verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The saints. Be renewed. A renewal taking place. A regeneration taking place. A righteousness in place in your heart, in your life. The saints. It's when you know who a saint is. I know by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me and washed me and purged me and has changed me and turned me around. That's when you know that you can lay claim to the inheritance of the saints. I'm looking at verse 24. And that she put on the new man. The saints put on the new man. Which, after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. There's a kind of false holiness. Bending down. Kneeling down. Yes, sir. Yes, madam. Yes, brother. Yes, sister. Putting our hands at the back. False holiness. True holiness. The one that comes from the heart. That has a change that has taken place in the soul, in the mind. And the Lord recognizing that this is holiness, a product of Calvary. A commodity coming from Christ that God puts in our lives. He talks about true holiness. That was the evidence of that true holiness that describes and demonstrates the life of a sage. Look at verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. That's the sage. Look at verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. A change of life has taken place. 
and because that change of life has taken place we say that is a converted soul a cleansed soul that one is a person that is now righteous and the lord a holy child of god that's a sage lying is god and you know why people lie either to cover up something or to get what doesn't belong to them a real child of god doesn't need all that a real child of god does not need lying all he needs is transparency truthfulness honesty righteousness holiness it goes on to verse 28 it says in verse 28 but rather let him labor don't steal anymore working with your hands the things which is good that he may have to give to them that need it. In verse 28, it says, 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's a sage. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. With whereby he has sealed unto the day of unto the day of redemption. Look at verse 31. We're looking at the sea so that you can determine: am I there? Is that my name? Am I a saint or a sinner? Am I a saint or an unbeliever? Am I a saint or just the old carnal creature? Because this is faith. We're talking about faith. Faith for the inheritance of the saints. Look at verse 31. Let all bitterness that's strange to a saint. And wrath that's strange to a true saint. And anger that's strange to a saint. Anger in the home. Anger in the church. Anger in the community. Anger against your wife. Anger against your husband. Anger against your neighbors. If we're going to be saints, it says, let all forms of bitterness, all forms of wrath, all forms of anger and clamor, shouting on each other, and evil speaking, gossiping, backbiting, slandering. Let everything be put away from you with all malice and be kind that's the life of the saints to one another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you now that we know who are saints we're not looking at what the Lord is saying for the saint and I pray that as the Lord touches your life and transforms your life and it takes all the bitterness away, all the wrath away, all the clamor away, all the anger away and then you present yourself before Calvary, before the cross and then the blood of Jesus cleanses and washes everything away and then you can say with the testimony of the Spirit in your heart he made me a saint. He cleansed me to be a saint. He changed me and transformed my life to be a saint. Then the inheritance will be yours in Jesus' name. Are you there? I said the inheritance will be yours in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 37 verse 18. Psalm 37. We're looking at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. That's another word for a saint. The upright, that's a saint. The righteous, that is a saint. The holy, that's a saint. The new creature, that's a saint. It says, the Lord knows the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. Their inheritance shall be forever. Their inheritance shall be forever. The Lord will grant you the inheritance in Jesus' name. The saint of God, the child of God, the one who is a new creature in Christ, he comes to the Lord with faith and trust and confidence. And he knows that this is the promise of the Lord for me. And he has uncompromising faith for the inheritance of the saints. I'm looking at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and we're looking at verse 12 Colossians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 12 Colossians Colossians chapter 1 reading from verse 12 it says giving thanks unto the father giving praise unto the father and exalting the father for what he has done and says 
which has made us meet suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light gives us another area another perspective of the saints he walks in the light he doesn't walk in darkness he walks in the light he doesn't have anything to do with any shady business deal he walks in the light he doesn't have anything to do with backhanded bribery and corruption he walks in the light he doesn't have anything to do with all the dim light houses with all the morality and all the perversions going on behind the door is walking in the light his life is thrown open his life is transparent his life is according to whatever he does or she does in the secret is what she'll do in the public is a saint that walks in light and he talks about the inheritance of the saints in light look at verse 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness that's the inheritance of the saints you know i bring you all these people running about i need deliverance here i need deliverance there i need deliverance there just become a saint and the devil will not be able to touch you again in jesus name <laughs> point number two the unconfined faith for the inheritance of the servants unconfined faith for the inheritance of the servants once again, I want you, just like we did with the saints, the inheritance of the saints, the Lord has the inheritance for his servants. But the question then is, who are the servants of the Lord? Because once again, you don't want to claim a promise that doesn't belong to you. You don't want to claim an inheritance that does not belong to you. You don't want to do like Ahab, that wants to have the inheritance of Nebuchadnezzar. You want to identify that this is the servant of the Lord. And because you are the servant of the Lord, this peculiar inheritance of his servants, they belong to you who are with then at the servants. I'm looking at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And I'm reading here from verse 24 to verse 26. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, except, except, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth fruit. It's telling us something and that the self life, except it dies, you're not going to bring forth fruit. You're not going to be able to serve the Lord and have the inheritance of the servants. If you're full of self, all of me and none of him. More of me and a little of him. Less of me, maybe a little bit more of him. But when you come to the point that self is dead, self-centeredness, dead. Selfishness, dead self-exaltation dead self-esteem dead all the things that i'm trying to get everything for myself make other people miserable and make yourself great self it is when that self dies that then you have become the servant of the lord and then you have the inheritance of the servants look at verse 25 he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me here is it if any man serve me here are the words of christ if any man serve me let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be it's not a servant for himself it's not looking for his own advantage his own glory his own exaltation his own happiness at the expense of righteousness in the kingdom of god it's not looking for a place a position of exaltation like Absalom at the expense of the life of David he searches for nothing he wants nothing 
all he wants is to be a servant of the Lord. And he's so transparent about it, he doesn't have any backhanded way of wanting anything for himself. He says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Those are the people that are called the servants of the Lord. I'm looking at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Those are the people. The sins of the past, they're free from them. It's like the Lord has taken the blood of Calvary, the blood of Christ coming from the cross of Calvary, and has washed and cleansed and made you free. He has severed, he has broken the yoke, he has broken the spell of the old sinful life away from your life. And it says, when you're free from sin, you become the servant of righteousness in verse 22. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God. Servants to God. You know, you cannot be serving sin and serving God at the same time, serving Satan, serving God at the same time, serving yourself and serving God at the same time. All that yoke is broken. And then he tells us in verse 22, being now made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. These are the people that have the inheritance of the servants. And if you're a servant of God like that, self is dead. Absalom spirit is dead. I do not just spirit, I'm looking for this for myself. All that is dead. James and John, as sons of Bernages, you know, give me this part on your right and this part on your left. All that is dead. Self-exaltation, putting other people down. All that is gone. If those are the servants of the Lord. They are not in need for themselves. Some people are in the service of the Lord for themselves. If I can get money out of it, popularity out of it, recognition out of it a place for myself out of it a place for my child my boy is brilliant my daughter is you know gifted and if i'm there i'll soon pass on i'm making a way for my boy for my daughter they're not in it for themselves for their children they are just there to serve the lord with all their heart all their soul they're not there for their tribes if I'm there, I'll bring in my tribe's people. Those are not servants of God. Those are servants of tribal people, tribal people. But the people who come with all their heart, all their soul. And they say, I want to serve the Lord without any string attached. And then they are free from self, they are free from sin, they are free from Satan. Those are the servants of the Lord. There is an inheritance for them. And if you know that you are like that, your mind is free. You are serving the Lord. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind is devoted unto him. Then the inheritance of the servants belong unto you. And you will have it in Jesus' name. Have you gone back home? I said you will have it in Jesus' name. Genesis, Genesis, I'm reading from chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. We're looking at the servants of the Lord. And this inheritance and this opportunity and this promise that belongs unto them. In Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran. Abraham was about a hundred years of age. He ran. He ran. You were run. I said you were run. The strength of the mighty will carry you. And the strength of the mighty will be in your life in Jesus' name. He ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if I now have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. 
from thy servant. You know that the, the servant of God, Abraham, and he had an inheritance. Look at verse 14, what the Lord is telling his servant. If you're truly a servant of the Lord, self dead. Absalom spirit dead. I don't like just spirit dead. Seeking for something at the expense of the church dead that to say i'm just here i am thy servant see what the lord is telling his servant in verse 14 he sent his seed to hard for the lord he sent his seed to hard for the lord i said he sent his seed to hard for the lord at the, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. That's what the Lord is telling his servant. At the time appointed, the promises of God will not fail in your life. The provision of the Lord will not fail in your life. The inheritance for the servants of the Lord will not fail in your life. At the time appointed, God will always have an appointed time in your life. And you will have all the inheritance of the servants in Jesus' name. Then now I want you to look at uh, verse 17. In verse 17 it says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? When you become a servant of the Lord like that, and all your heart, all your soul is given to the Lord, everything completely yielded to the Lord, the Lord is saying, everything I want to do, I'm going to reveal unto you. It's part of the inheritance. It will not hide anything from you. Verse 18, see that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children. He will command his children. He will command his children. You know, servants of the Lord are the people that honor God more than their children. And they uphold the commandments of the Lord in their families. They don't say, well, that's my child. I know he's not, you know, living right and everything. Everything is not okay, but that's my child. I'm a minister in the church and, you know, my child must, you know, climb on my shoulder. And even though he's not saved, not born again, yet put him there. Those are not servants of God. And they are serving their families. They just want to use the church to serve their families. But the people that say, my children will live according to the word. And if they are old enough to take their decision, they aren't living according to the word of the Lord. You will not put them there by all means like Eli. You get them out of that place. Those are the servants of the Lord. It says, because I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Those are the servants of the Lord and as inheritance belonging to them. You will not miss your inheritance in Jesus' name. When you have the law of God in your family, when you have the word of God entrenched in your family, when you make your children to know that there is no favoritism that you want them to be born again because except your child is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You say that education, yes, I will educate you if I can. Education is good, but salvation number one. Provision, I'm going to provide this for you. Provision is good, but I'm going to make salvation number one. When you, when you put that in your family, when your children know that salvation, righteousness, honesty, transparency is number one. Not that daddy is rich, that he has money, and he gets money here and there, and whatever I am, money will always come. Not that. But like Abraham, that's why God favored Abraham. That's why I said, he is my servant and he is my friend. And I pray you'll be a servant of the Lord and a friend of the Lord in Jesus' name. And you honor him more than yourself, more than your flesh. You honor him more than your husband. Honor him more than your wife. Honor him more than your children. Honor him more than your friend you knew in the church. You say, God is number one in my life. 
those are the people that are the servants of the Lord, especially inheritance, a peculiar inheritance belongs unto you. You will have it in Jesus' name. And then God told Abraham what he was going to do concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous of the wicked? But adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? See, the Father Almighty God had made up his mind. He was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But then Abraham took him up and said, God, will you do that if you see 50 righteous people there that be far from thee to do after this manner? to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right and the lord said if i find in sodom 50 righteous within the city then i will spare all the place for their sakes and that's the stand, the standing, the privilege, the favor, the grace, the opportunity that Abraham, the servant of the Lord, arch with God. I pray he will give you that privilege. That you'll be able to say, Lord, let's talk about this. And then you're able to say, Lord, I but if you see 50 righteous people there, 30 righteous people there, 20 righteous people there, 10 righteous people there, and the Lord will listen to you. And he will not carry out that thing he wanted to do without even talking to you and deciding with you. What a privilege, the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Who are the servants of the Lord? Let me remind you again, we're looking at second. Samuel chapter 15 verse 15 Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 15 When you own God, the God of heaven as your king When you own Jesus Christ as your Lord and master And everything you do, every place you go Everything you think, everything you every Everything you plan to do Will be according to the word of the Lord That's a servant of the Lord And that's the inheritance That's how you are going to have the inheritance of the servants Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 15 And the king's servant said unto the king Behold thy servants are ready Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my Lord the King shall appoint. When you say to God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that I am thy servant, I am ready to do whatsoever thou God my King shall appoint. Those people are going to have special, special treatment and special privilege with the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 7. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 21. 2 Samuel chapter 7, we're looking at verse 21, the word of the Lord unto David his servant. Look at this in verse 21. For thy word's sake, and according unto thine own heart, hast thou done all these things to make thy servant know them. You see, all these people of the Bible, they knew, they knew. You have to be a servant. And then this inheritance will come to you. And this privilege will come to you. And this favor will come to you. They are not the people that will just do as they want to do. And then they say, God, fulfill your promise. I can't obey your word, but fulfill your promise. I can't subject my will to your will, but fulfill your promise. I can't abandon my sin, but fulfill your promise. I know I'm self-centered and selfish, but all the same, fulfill your promise. I know there's an Absalom living inside me, but fulfill your promise. No, they knew that they were servants of the Lord. And as they were servants of the Lord, self was dead. And sin was gone. As a result of that, they now said, Lord, I'm your servant. Fulfill your promise and give me the inheritance you promised your servant. Verse 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant. The word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house to establish it forever. Do as thou hast said. Do as thou hast said. 
the Lord will do it in your life. When you lay everything on the altar, and when you say, it's not me, it's not me, it's not my desire, it's not my liking, it's not my wishes, it's not my comfort, it's not my convenience. All I want is the glory of God. All I want is the word of God to be fulfilled. Then the fire will fall. It will fall today in Jesus' name. I come to point number three, uncommon faith. The uncommon faith for the inheritance of sons. The question is, who are the sons? You know, you know sometimes we'll say, if you are a child of the devil, raise up your hand. Nobody wants to raise up the hand. If you are a child of God, raise up your hand. Everybody is raising up the hand. This is not by the raising up of hand. Who are the sons of God? Who are the sons of God? Before we're able to know, how do I claim the inheritance of the sons? I'm looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Those are the children of God, the sons of God. The Lord has subdued the Adamic nature, suppressed the Adamic nature, destroyed the Adamic nature. The ones that are always going to go my way. If I don't go my way, if everything doesn't go my way, I murmur, I complain, I, you know, bring conflict and bring whatever, all that is gone. The sons of God do all things without murmurings and disputings, that she may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God. God without rebuke. The sons of God without rebuke. In your life, you have excavated everything. You've dug out everything. And all that murmuring and complaining and fault finding and slandering, all that is gone. In your heart, you surrender everything to the Lord. You say, Lord, not what I want and not what I wish. I just want to belong unto you. And whatever you do and whatever you allow, I will not murmur, I will not complain. Whatever your people in the church you have commanded them to do, I'm not going to think is that according to my wish, according to my comfort, according to my convenience there is no murmuring there's no complaining and you do all things that you are supposed to do that you are asked to do without murmuring without complaining that she may be blameless and harmless and the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as light in the world those are the sons of God in first John chapter 3 first John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 1 First John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What manner of love, what manner of love and grace and mercy and compassion the Lord has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? These are the sons of God. How do you know them? It's says we have been converted we have been trans we have been changed and it says now are we the sons of god look at this in that verse 2 and say now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and every man every son every child every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure those are the sons of god and those sons of god have inheritance and i pray that inheritance will be yours in jesus name are you there I said inheritance will be yours in jesus name in ezekiel chapter 46 and verse 16 it all says the Lord God, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. A saint, a servant, a son, his saint, his servant, his son. What privilege do we have? Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. 
Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, every saint, everyone, every servant, everyone, every son, that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. It is now time to ask. It will fulfill his word in our lives in Jesus' name. A saint, a servant, a son. Let's rise up and let's talk to the Lord in prayer. God is a faithful God and it takes a saint to get to heaven. And already we know the word of God. If only in this life we have hope in Christ. Will be of all men the most miserable. If all we have on earth is all these mundane things of the earth. And we are not saints of God. We are not servants of God. We are not sons of God. Will be of all men the most miserable. You want to make sure the blood of Jesus has washed you. Has cleansed you. Has purged you. Has purified you. And that you become transparent before the Lord. You want to make sure that your being a Christian is not just, uh, you know, a screen. That you just, just uh, blindfold people. I am, you know, a member so you can get business. I'm a member so you can get this or that. I'm a member so you can get some money in your pocket. You want to make sure that transparently, really, really, you are a saint of God. You are a son of God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, yes, that's what I will be. Healing without holiness. No man shall say the Lord deliverance without holiness. No man shall say the Lord prosperity without holiness. No man shall say the Lord. You want to tell the Lord, here am I. I commit myself unto you. I commit my life unto you. I will be a saint. I will be a saint. I will be a saint. All the pollutions of the world gone. All those evil things of the past, everything gone. Come, you lay everything on the altar. The Lord wants you to pray. You pray for holiness more than you pray for healing. To be a real son of God. To be a real child of God, a real servant of God. All the self centeredness you lay on the altar. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. And everybody said, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the clarity of the word. We thank you, Lord, because you have called us here not to play religion. You have called us here not to cover up any sin or any evil. You've helped us to make it plain, as plain as it ought to be. And we're praying that all the people that have not been real saints, the sins in their lives, they will lay at the foot of the cross and the blood of Jesus will wash them whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And those who have not been serving you with all their heart, all their soul, in a transparent way, we pray, Lord, this day, the grace of God will come from on high and they'll become your real servant, totally dead to self and dead to the devil and dead to the world and dead to tribalistic things in Jesus' name. And those who have not by faith become the real son of God in the open, in the public, and in the private, we pray the grace of God that even passes understanding, we pray it will work in every life right now. And they will become real sons of God in Jesus' name. And all your promises and inheritance you have given to the saints, inheritance for the servants, inheritance for your sons will come upon our lives will abide in our lives the blessings of God will be yes and amen in our lives in Jesus name break every yoke destroy the works of the devil exalt the name and the power of the Lord in every life in Jesus name and Lord as you grant us all these blessings we pray 
our being servants and saints and sons will not just be for one day everywhere we go anywhere we may be the mark and the evidence of being a saint the mark and the evidence of being a servant of the Lord. The mark and the evidence of being a son of God will be seen in our lives all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. And we will never lack any of your promises being fulfilled in our lives. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And once again everybody said... Finally, 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 everybody said... Yeah. Amen.